In this video, I want to prove the generalized uncertainty principle. So consider two Hermitian observables, A and B. They have uncertainty sigma A and sigma B. And so the generalized uncertainty principle will be something like sigma A squared times sigma B squared is greater than or equal to something. So let's write out sigma A squared in a bit more detail. So sigma A squared is defined this way, but I can also write it as the expectation value of the a minus the expectation of value of a all squared. So I'm taking the expectation value of all of that. Um, so let me just write that out. So the expectation value means I have this sandwiched in here with some spot size. And let me just write the square out as two factors of the a operator minus its expectation value. Okay, and so then I'm going to use the fact that A is a Hermitian operator to move this over onto Psi, onto the bra of Psi. So now this is operating on Psi, uh, and that's inner product with the same thing operating on Psi. So I could just write this as the inner product of two states, F, or a norm of a state f, where f is the operator a minus the expectation value of a operating on some generic state psi. So at this moment, this is all ge very generic, um, but I can write it this way. For sigma b squared, I can do a similar thing, inner product uh, between g and itself, where the state g is the operator b minus its expectation value operating on a generic state psi. So all I've done right now is I've just rewritten sigma a squared and sigma b squared. Um, but there are two inequalities that are going to be really essential to the generalized uncertainty principle. So the first inequality says that if I take the inner product of f with itself and multiply it by the inner product of g with itself, it's always greater than or equal to the inner product between f and g squared. Uh, you can think of this as, in vector notation, as the magnitude of a squared times the magnitude of a vector b squared is greater than or equal to the dot product between the two vectors squared. If you think about that, that makes sense. Uh, this is called, in the general case, the Schwartz inequality, uh, the relationship between these two states. The second inequality I'm going to use is that the absolute value of a complex number squared is always greater than or equal to the imaginary part of that complex number squared. Uh, so the inner product between f and g is a uh, complex number in general. Uh, and so we can use this on the right-hand side of the inequality. And so we'll write on the right-hand side the imaginary part of the inner product between f and g. Write it like this way. So again, this whole thing, 1 over 2i, and then the inner product between f and g minus its complex conjugate is the inner product excuse me, the imaginary part of uh, f and g inner product. Okay, so this is going to be our starting point for the generalized uncertainty principle. So the left-hand side looks like sigma a squared times sigma b squared. So we just need to figure out what is on the right-hand side. What is this thing on the right-hand side in terms of our operators a and b? So let's compute it. So let's compute the inner product between f and g. So recall f was a operator minus its expectation value operating on psi, and g was b operator minus its expectation value operating on psi. Again, since a is a Hermitian, Hermitian operator, I can move that into the middle for a operator minus its expectation value, so I get something that looks like this. Uh, and so now let me distribute through so a operator in, expectation value in, so I get four terms. So I'll have uh, inner product with psi, a hat, b hat psi, minus inner product between psi, expectation value of a, b hat psi, minus similar expression, but now with a hat, expectation value of b psi, and then lastly, I have a term which is inner product with psi, and then expectation value of A, expectation value of B, psi. 
Uh, make sure that you follow all those four terms and where they came from. Um, the first term is just the expectation value of a hat b hat. The second term, I can pull the expectation value of a out here, because it's just a number, and then I get the expectation value of b. So it's the product of expectation value of a and b. The third term, I can do the same thing with the expectation value of b, so I get actually the same thing. And then the fourth term, the expectation value of a, expectation value of b inside here can also be pulled out. They're just numbers. Uh, and then I get expectation value of a times expectation value of b times 1, which is uh, the normalization of psi. I get some cancellations, and so at the end of the day, I get expectation value of a times b minus expectation value of a times expectation value of b. I have two terms on the right-hand side. That was just one of them. The second term involves switching g and f. I'm not going to go through all the details. They're essentially all the same. You just get, instead of a hat b hat, now you get b hat a hat expectation value minus this same term expectation value of A, expectation value of B. Okay, so let's evaluate the right-hand side, which is the difference between these two. Well, the last term in each of these cancels, so I just get expectation value of A times B minus expectation value of B times A. Or I can put those inside of the expectation value common, convince yourself that that makes sense if you need to to write it out, uh, which I can write as the commutator between a hat and b hat, expectation value. That's a nice little compact looking expression. So that's now the right hand side of my uncertainty principle. And so we are now in a position to write out in detail the generalized uncertainty principle. And so the generalized uncertainty principle is sigma a squared, sigma b squared, is greater than or equal to 1 over 2i expectation value of the commutator between the operators a and b, and that's all squared. So the uncertainty in a times the uncertainty in b is greater than or equal to the square of the commutator, essentially, between a and b. There's this i down here. What, what's going on with this i? Um, doesn't it make the right-hand side negative? Uh, it turns out it won't. Um, this i over here is OK. Uh, this commutator, the expectation value of the commuta commutator, will either be imaginary, purely imaginary, or it will be zero. Uh, and so it's not going to be a deal, any big deal. For example, let's look at a hat being the position operator and b hat being the momentum operator. So then we have an uncertainty principle for sigma x squared, sigma p squared, that's greater than or equal to uh, 1 over 2i, expectation value of the commutator between x hat and p hat, all squared. But recall, the commutator between x hat and p hat, we learned, is just i h bar. So we can shove that into the right-hand side here. And so the right-hand side is now 1 over 2i times i h bar, all squared. Hey, look, the i's cancel, just as I promised. If we take a square root, we can get sigma x times sigma p is greater than or equal to h bar over 2. Hey, that looks very familiar. Uh, we recognize this, so we have recovered Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, the one we learn about when we first learn quantum mechanics. But we recovered it and learned it as a special case here of the generalized uncertainty principle. Uh, and so you can imagine taking any two other operators and deriving your own uncertainty principle.